Hi guys, uh, welcome to the video tutorial for 5.2.3 circuits and energy and potentiometers. So um, the first learning objective is actually tied to 5.2.2 uh, and then everything else is on 5.2.3. Uh, okay, so let's begin. Um, our first learning objective is to look at potentiometers. So we have to know the function of them as well as the operation of them. In terms of the function, a potentiometer uh, can, is also known as a variable potential divider, and sometimes it could even be referred to as a variable resistor. And uh, the reasoning for this is that uh, it, it modifies the voltage or the potential difference by modifying the voltage, sorry, by modifying the resistance. So here we have a, a simple diagram of a um, variable potentiometer. And um, in the middle, in the gray section, you can see that there's a thick resistive film. So current or uh, voltage flows from A to B. And what can also happen is that we can also connect an object from A to any of the W points, meaning we could potentially connect um, a, a component, a circuit component from A to W2 or from W2 to B. Now, if we consider that each of these little ticks up here, so this is zero ohms and this is 10 ohms at the end, then uh, A to W1, so there's two ticks that's passed, so that would be two ohms of resistance that it goes through. And so, if we go from W1 to, uh, to B, so let me just maybe modify this a little bit. So in terms of our first example, from A to W1 okay, is two ohms of resistance, and then from W1 to B is eight ohms of resistance. Now, uh, as a class, I ask students to uh, make a, a guess as an activity on what they think A to W2 was and W2 to B. Likewise, A to W3 and W3 to B. So please take a moment to pause this video and to maybe just either do this as a mental exercise or write it down on a piece of paper. Okay, so I hope you've uh, at least made an attempt at that. So from A to W2, we're going to get, I'm just going to stick with the same color. We're going to have 5 ohms of resistance, and we're also going to have 5 ohms of resistance. It's right in the middle, right? 1, 2, 3 four, five. W3 is right at the very end. So that would be nine ohms of resistance from A to W3 and only one ohm of resistance from W3 to B. Now, um, your, some of the questions from Cognitive requires you to uh, sort of solve it using this new formula, but it's not really a new formula. Um, it's taking the knowledge that you had previously and it's converting that into a formula format. So what it's telling you is that it's telling you that uh, first off that we have uh, an object connected in series. So if we simplify this from A to B, there's a resistor in the middle. So it's actually connected in series. So the current from A to W should be the same as the current from W to B. Okay, so any of the W's, and so it'll vary obviously depending on how much resistance it picks up, and so as a result of that, the voltage will also change as well. So that's why uh, I mentioned that it could be known as a variable resistor, but also as a variable potential divider as well. So as the voltage changes, the resistance changes, but the current always stays the same. So given that piece of knowledge, uh, what we're essentially doing is we're using Ohm's law, V equals to IR, to rearrange that equation as uh, V over R. So I equals to V over R. So then we have two situations. We have A to W, okay, which is just a re-expression of Ohm's law, but it's really just saying the currents are the same, really. And then uh, the voltage over the resistance from W to B. And so that sort of creates a rough sort of ratio and that can also be used to solve some of the equations that we're going to see coming up. Okay, um, 
So in this particular example, a potentiometer has a total resistance of 100 kilo ohms. A 12 volt cell assembly is connected across A and B. Point A is at zero volts, so I'm just going to label that. And if the spindle can rotate 270 degrees, that means this piece right here can rotate 270 degrees. Uh, and the resistance is proportional to the angular position. At what angle of rotation will the potential difference of 10 volts be produced? So first off, let's consider, uh, let's draw on a battery here. So we've got 0 volts on this side, and we've got 12 volts coming through to this side here. And so actually this arrow should probably point this way, okay? So um, we have the full, uh, the full voltage on this side, and then it gets smaller and smaller as it moves through that, okay? So at what point is it gonna be 10? So probably somewhere around this side, we're gonna have our 10 volts. But what exactly would that angle be? So how we're gonna solve this is that, uh, first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 100 kilo ohms. So because it's at, it's in proportion to each other, um, we're gonna divide that by 12 volts. Okay, and that's going to give us uh, 22 and a half volts. And so as a result of that, that means that every, um, sorry, uh, 22.5 uh, degrees per one volt. Okay, so essentially every, every 22 and a half degrees is worth one voltage of change. So, uh, this would be 11 volts, and that would be the first one, 22 and a half. And the next one would be 10 volts, and that would be double that, which would be 25. Okay, so would you just keep going down that? So essentially, if we're at 10 volts, we're going to multiply this by 10. And so, uh, simple mathematics, uh, that's going to be 225 degrees is the answer for that. Okay. Um, an additional thing that you're going to be asked to look at is uh, the light dependent resistor and there are also heat dependent resistors um, and what this is going to uh, do is that uh, the light dependent resistor changes its resistance depending on how much light comes in and so it usually has higher resistance when there is uh, when it's dark and then when it receives light it uh, Sorry, as, as high resistance when it's dark, yep. And then it decreases in res resistance when, uh, when light comes through. And so what that allows us to do is that you can trigger something like an alarm bell uh, when that happens. And so um, there is an action, there's an example in, uh, in Cognity, example number six, which uh, I'm choosing not to go through here, but it does use uh, this particular formula right here. Uh, if you can call it even a formula, uh, but it uses this variation of um, of Ohm's law and the idea that current stays consistent. Okay, so uh, that's the little tip and trick for solving that. Okay, on to our next set of learning objectives is to state that current passing through a resistor will inevitably heat it, and then we didn't get to the part about calculating the power dissipated because the, the whole idea of calculating power and energy is actually near the end uh, at 5.2.3, which we're talking about right now. Uh, we also have to distinguish between power and energy and convert between them. So we'll be talking about those things. First off, our definition for power is that um, the electric power transformed by a device in a circuit is equal to the product of the potential difference or voltage across it and the current through it. So in terms of simple mathematics, P power equals to current uh, multiplied by voltage or potential difference. So here uh, I've got the units on the side here along with the, uh, the variable or the quantities. And then the, um, so here we have the variables and then the actual quantity name. Okay. Um, so one other thing that you're going to see as a result of this, and this is related to looking at resistance and power. So we're going to relate the whole idea of resistance with power because you can see there is no resistance in this particular formula. So how do we, how can we make that connection between the two? Well, the answer actually lies in connecting the two equations of Ohm's law 
along with our new equation P equals to IV. So what we're really doing is that we're going to substitute either voltage or current, which you can see in examples one and two. So in example number one, we're, su we're substituting voltage for IR, right? So that's it's just making substitution for that. And so we're going to get with uh, I squared R if we simplify that. And here we're uh, substituting current for V over R. So here we're going to have V squared over R. Now, luckily, you don't have to memorize that. Your data booklet contains all of that information already. So P equals to VI is also equal to I squared times R. And it's also equal to V squared over R. So let's maybe quickly look at an example of this. Uh, a circuit consists of a cell of potential difference of 1.5 volts connected to a single resistor of 470 ohms. Determine the power transformed into internal energy in the resistor. So this is just a straight substitution, uh, straight plug and play. And uh, so it's 1.5 volts squared, 470 ohms. And so 1.5 squared divided by 470 ohms is going to give us 4.8 times 10 to the negative 3. And power is measured in watts. So pretty straightforward. Uh, lastly, uh, this is uh, our conversion of uh, energy in the kilowatt hour. And uh, we're also going to touch on the conver uh, how this conversion works. So uh, in terms of energy, um, we have uh, the joule back in chapter 2. We had the electron volts when we studied chapter 7. And now we're talking about the kilowatt hour. So it seems that we like to invent a lot of other ways to express energy besides the joule, but we want to understand how we got those and how they're related. So the kilowatt hour, so that's power, is part of that. The kilowatt hour uh, is the amount of energy transformed by device with a power of one kilowatt operating for one hour. So we don't like to talk about things happening every second uh, because we're, when we talk about energy, we're we want, we're usually calculating it over larger periods of time. So one kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 megajoules. And here I'm going through how we derive that. So from a one kilowatt hour, so I'm separating kilowatt hour into the amount of seconds in an hour, which is 3,600 seconds. So now what we've got is kilowatt seconds instead of kilowatt hours, which means one kilowatt hour is 3,600 kilowatt seconds. And then so uh, what I then do is that I'm going to convert that into mega. Okay, so from kilo, kilo is 10 to the power of 3, mega is 10 to the power of 6. And so we just shift that decimal. We eliminate three decimal places. We got 3.6 megawatt seconds. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to substitute the watt for a work per unit time. Uh, so work per unit time, really, and sorry, and then the seconds is the actual, uh, so it's actually joules per second is what uh, uh, I meant to write there. Okay, so work per unit time or joules per unit second, and then so as a result of that, the seconds can then cancel out, and now you have kilowatt hours to mega joules. Okay, um, our next example is going to look at some calculations of that kilowatt hour. Uh, and then we're going to look at some conversions between kilowatt hour and energy after this. So here we have two objects, an incandescent filament light bulb, and we have an LED uh, light, which is a, a light emitting diode, or LED for short. Uh, so you can see that the incandescent light bulb transforms a lot of uh, energy to get the same amount of brightness. Okay, So it's actually less efficient. Uh, the LED being a... Well, not all modern uh, inventions are, are better, but usually they are. So the LED light is a, a better invention, and so it conserves more energy. And so um, if we operate this for 30 days, and it costs us 15 cents per kilowatt hour, what's the cost? And so um, I've done some of the, the, the thinking work here for you. So let's just walk through this. So first off, what we want to do is convert watt into kilowatts. Simple thing, shift the decimal over by three. One, two, three, right? One, two, three. And then so we're, we get those two values right there. Next up, what we want to do is change time 
into hours. Okay, kilowatt hours is what we're trying to reach. So we've already taken care of half of that, the kilowatt. Next thing we need to do is try to get hours. So there are 720 hours, right? 30 times 24 hours in a day is 720 hours in 30 days. And so now that we've got the same units, it makes it a lot easier for us to do our calculations. So we've got our power in kilowatts, we've got our time in hours, and then we have a cost per kilowatt hour. So cost per kilowatt hour right here. And so as you can see already that the kilowatt will cancel, the hour will cancel, and then we're just left with the cost there. Okay, so now that we've gone through sort of the thinking part of this, let's uh, just get into the calculations and the substitutions. So incandescent, we have 100 watts. We have a time of 720 hours. I'm just going to write H for hours. And then we have a cost of 15 cents per one kilowatt hour. Okay, so we know these guys are going to cancel out. All the units are going to cancel out. So it's going to be 100 times 720 times 0.15. So it's going to cost us $10.80. Um, okay, so I'm missing something here. A hundred, no, sorry, that's point, yeah, my, my, my calculation is completely wrong. That's, that's in watts. We want it in kilowatts. So 0 0.1, okay, that'll give us uh, the actual value of $10.80, otherwise we don't get that. Okay, the LED is the second value, 0 0.017 kilowatts, kilowatts, and then uh, we have 720 hours, and now that it, it cancels out perfectly, 0 0.15, one kilowatt hour, and uh, 0 0.017 times 720, 0.15, and so we have $1.84 rounding up. Okay, so you can see that uh, the light bulb is, sorry, the LED light bulb is much more cost efficient compared to the incandescent, the older technology. Okay, uh, example number three, determine the amount of energy transformed in one year. Ooh, one year, that's gonna be a lot of hours. Uh, at a continuous power of five kilowatts expressed in kilowatt hours or megawatt hours and in joules. So these two are more or less the same thing and then we got joules. Okay, um, so in terms of the amount of energy transformed in a year, um, so first off what we wanna do is we wanna to get to our common units. We've got a power of five kilowatts. We've got one year which we wanna convert into hours. So one year has the first 365 days and each day has 24 hours. So one year, excuse me, is uh, 365 times 24, so it's 8,760 hours in one year. So to get that, uh, the kilowatt hour, we just need to multiply the two numbers. Okay, so we have um, five kilowatts times the number of hours, so now we've got kilowatt hours, so uh, multiply that by five. We're gonna have 43,800 kilowatt hours, okay? And so we could also do a megawatt hours, which means we shift the decimal over by three. So 43.8 megawatt hours. Okay, so these two values are exactly the same. Just changing the way we express the power. And last, we wanna convert this in joules. So uh, we know that one kilowatt hour is 3.6 megajoules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 43,800 kilowatt hours. So every one kilowatt is worth 3.6 megajoules. So we just multiply the two together. And uh, 3.6. Okay, so uh, we're going to get... One five seven six eight zero megajoules. Okay, and then uh, if you want to do significant figures, uh, I guess two is the smallest significant figure here, so we would round that up to sixteen uh, four zeros megajoules. So you could actually even go up to uh, giga if you want, one hundred and sixty gigajoules. 
so you can even round that up even further, okay? Or you could say uh, 0.16 terajoules if you want even. Okay, uh, so that's it for today, guys. Um, see you guys next time. That's the wrap for Chapter 5.2. We'll see you guys back for Chapter 5.3.